Welcome to Jesse's Flying and today let's talk about two hot topics that came up in the last few days. The first one, the macOS Sonoma Beta is available and you can install it on unsupported Macs. Let's talk about how to do that, if it's already worth doing it and what might be the problems of Sonoma Beta. And second, obviously, yesterday macOS 13.5 was released and let's talk about updating unsupported Macs to the latest macOS Ventura, which models you can upgrade safely, which you shouldn't and what might be remaining problems. Let's start. But wait, just 40 minutes ago, the brand new OpenCore Legacy Patcher version 0.6.8 was released and there are two things you might find interesting. So first let's cover the easy topic, the macOS 13.5 Ventura. There are no reports that Apple changed big things in macOS behind the curtain and so you can safely upgrade with your latest OpenCore Legacy patcher. I did that here on my two MacBooks for testing. That is a MacBook Pro 2012, which has an Intel third generation chip. For those who are interested, it's pre Haswell chip. And a 2013 MacBook Air that has a fourth generation Haswell chip. Um, and I tried both kinds of updates. First of all, with the MacBook Air, I just go went to the settings, hit update, it downloaded the 12 gigabyte update. As you know, if you have an unsupported Mac, it cannot do incremental updates. So basically on my modern MacBook, it was just a 1.5 gigabyte download, but here you always have to download the full installer, which is about 12 gigabytes. After downloading, just hit install, it reboots three, four times, no action needed, nothing. Afterwards, 13.5 was installed. Then the OpenCore Legacy patcher popped up. It said, okay, the root patch is missing because of the update. You just go to the OpenCore Legacy patcher, reinstall the root patch, do another reboot, you're done. For the MacBook Pro, I tried a different approach. I created a USB drive installer with the latest 13.5 macOS Ventura and OpenCore. And if you want to know how to do that, here is my ultimate tutorial with a lot of more questions and answers how to install macOS on unsupported Macs. And afterwards, I just plugged the USB drive in, booted from the USB installer and installed it like if you would install macOS on a clean hard drive, but if there's already a macOS, it doesn't update. So a lot of you ask me if I do this, do I lose my data? No, you don't. All data, all settings are kept because macOS just recognizes, the installer just recognizes there's already a macOS on the hard disk. And so you just update your macOS. And afterwards, when you do the update, the root patch is already applied. So if you just wonder, you go to the OpenCore Legacy patcher and it already says the root patch is installed. So same procedure after three more reboots, 13.5 was set up, everything is fine, everything is working. But other than that, I tried daily use apps like Apple TV+, Plus, like GarageBand and I sometimes got some comments from users where GarageBand didn't find any graphic drivers, but that mostly happened on Macs 2011 and older that has no metal capable graphic cards. Then it gets complicated. Here on both Macs 2012 and 13, GarageBand, Apple TV Plus and also iMovie where I just created a short trailer, everything work flawlessly and the MacBook Pro has an integrated HD 4000 graphics chip in the CPU and it also has a dedicated Nvidia GT graphics card. So I switched between the integrated and the dedicated graphics card and tried all the apps on both graphic cards. Everything worked flawlessly. Despite the weather app on the 
a MacBook Air 2013, where I have no idea why it takes so long and why it's so crappy, but maybe you can just live with that and don't use the weather app on the HD 5000. If you have the same problem maybe on a fourth generation Intel chip, 2013, or on any other Mac, just give me a comment. Or if you found other flaws, or if it's just working perfectly, just give me a comment in the video and so everyone else can read the comments and can also have the experience here that you share and we would really appreciate that. So the brand new version was just released by the developers and the two main things you find on top of the change log here with the releases. First of all, the problems that Mr. Macintosh reported with his 2011 Mac that has an HD 3000 graphics card because he ended up in a black screen, more or less boot loop while trying to update to macOS 13.5 has been fixed with that new Open Core Legacy Patcher version. So I think he will update his video with a new version testing. And the second thing is that they integrated AMFI Pass. So what is that? Many of you had problems with enabling camera or microphone for apps like Zoom or Skype or uh, Google Meet or something like that. That was because since macOS 13.3, they had to disable AMFI, that is a security system inside the macOS to be able to get 13.3 or newer run on the Macs, on the unsupported Macs. With AMFI Pass, they can now leave AMFI enabled, which now shouldn't cause any more problems with camera and microphone and everything else. Other than that, there are a lot of bug fixes and a lot of stuff behind the curtain that has been updated. You won't even notice as a regular user. But now let's check out my both MacBooks and install the newest version and check out macOS 13.5. Just as I thought and as the devs described it, it seems as if all the problems with giving access to the camera, to the microphone and everything are gone. I just started a brand new installation of GarageBand and it just popped up and asked for permission to use the microphone, which didn't happen on version 0.6.7 because AMFI was disabled. Now it's enabled again, and when you look here in microphone, you see GarageBand has given the permission to use the microphone. So what we can do is we start Zoom. And here it is, Zoom asks that it would like to access microphone as well. We just hit OK. And when we go to the settings, you see Zoom also has permission. Same should work with the camera. And let's go to video. There is a question. We say, okay. And we got video camera access. And when you go to the settings, uh, we have to close the settings first here. And then we go to privacy and security and we go to the camera, you see Zoom has access. So I definitely recommend installing the brand new version 0.6.8 to get rid of all these access security problems with camera, microphone and so on. And I just tested it on both of my machines, all other things that worked on 067 worked as well and uh, now let's check what the weather app says here on this MacBook Air. There is a chart and we still got the turning ball and this very sluggish slow behavior in the weather app so there's no change at all despite the findings of 13.5 on the open core version 0.6.7.
And there is one more thing, as they already say with the Apple uh, presentations. There is one more thing that they have resolved the AMD Vega support. And you find that here when you go to the full change log. They have resolved AMD Vega support on pre-AVX2 machines. So what does that mean? AVX2 is a code set instruction in, in, uh, that started with the fourth generation Intel chips. And the Mac Pros 2012 and 13, the trash can and the cheese grater have Intel Xeon processors that doesn't have AVX2. So with 068, you should be able to use AMD Vega graphic cards in your Mac Pro cheese grater again or as an eGPU with the trash can. Unfortunately, my both Mac Pros are not here yet due to my move here to the US, so I cannot test it yet. But if you have tested it, give me a comment and please share your experiences if your AMD Vega GPU now works with your Mac Pros. So, but there is one more thing again with 0.6.8 and that is about macOS Sonoma Beta. I know that there are some rumors in the forums on Facebook and with Mr. Macintosh also released a video how to install Sonoma Beta on your Mac, on your unsupported Mac, obviously. And the first question is, does it make sense? No, it doesn't. This is a beta, it's developer, it's just for playing around. So at first, if you need your Mac for anything useful, don't do that, okay? It's just, if you have a spare Mac, if you have an old Mac sitting somewhere you wanna play with, you can try to install Sonoma, but don't use it on a productive machine. Second, um, even macOS is not ready as same as the OpenCore Legacy patch is not ready. But starting with the support package 1.2.0, and I will show you in a moment what that means, the OpenCore Legacy patch basically supports Sonoma Beta in its actual status. It might happen that during the beta development, Apple changes something and it doesn't work anymore. So when you're going into the change log of the officially released 068 just an hour ago, you go down here and you open up the full change log. You can see at the very bottom that increment binaries, the patcher support package 1.2.2 release version is included. So that is higher than 1.2.0. And what does it mean? So when you go to the OpenCore Legacy Patcher, and I just show you the way and I give you the link down in the video description as well. When you go to pull requests, you see here one pull request preliminary support for macOS Sonoma. And that has the number 1077. By the way, that's the same link you find with Mr. Macintosh's video. So if you go here, they describe all the things happening with Sonoma Beta. And when you scroll down a little bit, just after all the files here, you find three days ago from Chrono Kernel, one of the developers, you find early preview of Sonoma support. And here it says, with the release of Patcher support package 1.2.0, they have published an early version of the Sonoma patches. And a few lines down the road, you find which Mac models are basically supported. And that is basically everything from 2012 MacBook Air and Pro and Mac Mini, the iMac from 2009 and the Mac Pro 2008, that's the cheese grader, and Xsurf as well, and the regular MacBook from 2015. Some of them require metal GPU. And here as well, you can see Basically 2012 and newer has metal GPU. And that is the same that I would suggest you can update to Ventura or maybe later to Sonoma, but not earlier than that. So 
here you will find when you scroll through all the other things are uh, problems they are fighting and coping with and when you just go down a little bit you find the latest validated builds for the sonoma development you find the download link here a nightly link that is when you read something about the nightly build that is like the open core legacy petra in its actual development stadium and not with like a final release version but right now you have the very uh, nice happening that 068 was just released as one final release with the support package 1.2.2 which is three days newer than this nightly build so you can just download the 068 version and try to install the Sonoma beta with that. Don't forget the root patch afterwards. And the basic install is the same as with any macOS versions. If you want to know how to do that, you find it in my tutorial and the link is also down in the video description. So happy testing with Sonoma. Just give me comments below if it worked for you. What are the problems and please add which Mac model you tried that. I really thank you for watching my channel, for enjoying my channel. See you soon. Bye bye.